and I'm embarrassed to admit this. I have been doing the complete opposite of this. We've made developments, that's good. This is why it's important for me to see this in front of my face. <laughs> The rest of the Q1 was not my best. What's up you guys, it's Hannah. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to my first quarterly recap, review, reset video. I talked in my 2024 planning video about how I wanted to potentially make videos throughout the year. I threw around the idea of like a monthly reset, checking in with the goals that I made at the beginning of the year, seeing how I've been progressing, stuff like that. But since I post one video, a week. I thought that doing monthly check-ins and all of that would be too much. So my solution was to just do one every quarter. Today I want to obviously check in with my 2024 goals that I made. I also want to do a little financial recap for Q1. I also want to go over what books I've read in Q1. I love to read. My favorite hobby absolutely by far. I have been reading an amazing series. I'm almost done the series. I'm on the final book but the final book is a thousand pages so. And finally I'm going to do a little bit of tidying in my apartment. I'm not in my apartment right now. <laughs> if you didn't know, if you couldn't tell, this is my parents' house in Pennsylvania. I'm here just visiting for the week. I came for Easter and I'm just staying through the week to have some family time, a little bit of a break, a little bit of a breather. But I did tidy up my apartment a little bit before I left, which I love to do. So when I come back, it's nice and clean, but also oh, there's so many things that I haven't fully cleaned in longer than I care to admit. I think that about sums up what I wanna do in this video. I wanna do at least these four categories in every quarter reset recap video that I do. Maybe I'll add different ones if something specific comes into my mind, but we're starting here for now. I'm gonna start off with the <laughs> financial reset because it just gives me anxiety. Everything about money and finances gives me anxiety. So we're gonna do that first. And I do feel good after I check in with these things because the more I know, the better decisions I can make. It is time for my 2024 Q1 financial review, kindly sponsored by Rocket Money. If you are not familiar with Rocket Money, I talked about them in my 2024 goals video. And I said that I really wanted to get a better grip on my financials this year, a better understanding of my spending, getting into budgeting, and just understanding my habits when it comes to my money and trying to improve them. So enter Rocket Money. They're a personal finance app that helps you to cancel on one subscriptions, lower bills, and just overall manage your money better. You can manage your subscriptions, lower your bills, build a custom budget, and even grow your savings all in one place. And it has saved its members over $1 billion and counting. I personally have used Rocket Money to cancel on one subscription. Thanks to Rocket Money, I found out that I was paying $3.99 a month for an ad week subscription for like the past four years. I I had no recollection of even signing up for that. Rocket Money safely and securely identifies recurring charges and they can even cancel them for you. I'm also using Rocket Money to set budgets. I love being able to visualize what I'm spending the most money on. I will show you my little breakdown for all of Q1 in a little bit, but it's just so helpful. I'm a visual learner. I like seeing stuff like that. You can also see your spend to earn ratio, which is another really helpful tool. And finally, Rocket Money can even lower some of your bills. You can either type in all of your information for your bill manually or upload a photo of it. And Rocket Money will negotiate your bills for you from internet service to cable and phone bills. I actually just found out that my internet service bill was raised. So I will definitely be sending my bill over to Rocket Money and seeing if they can negotiate it down for me. If you want to save more and spend less, you can join the over 5 million members using Rocket Money today. You can go to rocketmoney.com slash Hannah Elise to get started for free today and you can also unlock more features with premium. That's rocketmoney.com slash Hannah Elise to get started for free today. Thank you going to Rocket Money for sponsoring this portion of today's video. I'm gonna do a screen recording and we're gonna go in and I'll show you what's up. I love this, like the colors, it's just so helpful to see obviously what the biggest ones are. This is for January, February, March. Highest category was travel and vacation. I went to Thailand in January, so that does make sense. Also this breakdown includes bills but doesn't include rent and also doesn't include taxes and investments. You can hide things. I wanna see what I'm like actually choosing to spend my money on. Taxes, I don't choose to spend my money on, obviously. Rent is just, I know how much that's gonna be. Also investments, I guess, aren't included in this because they're technically still my money, just in a different account. But we've got categories including travel and vacation, shopping, accounting, fees, dining and drinks, groceries, bills and utilities, health and wellness, business, auto and transport, entertainment and rec, personal care, cash and checks, software and tech, home and garden, and pets. Those are the categories of my spending. As I said, 21%. For the past three months, it's been travel and vacation. 
The next highest, 15%. Actually, no, the next two are tied, both 15%. Shopping and accounting. Accounting makes sense because it's tax season. Shopping, on the other hand, this is why it's important for me to see this in front of my face because I can cut down there. That's very much in my control. If there's anything that I need to buy, that's one thing but it's needs versus wants. Do I really need this thing or do I just want it? This is definitely a category that I can cut down in. I'm gonna write down my takeaways from this. Takeaway number one, cut spending in shopping. Okay. Fees are the next biggest and this is a big chunk this quarter because I had to pay my yearly fee for my financial advisor. This next category is another one that I can and will be cutting down in, which is dining and drinks. I mean, it even says I'm down 9% in this category from Q4 2023, but I know that a lot of what went into this is ordering in. I talked about this in my last video where I was talking about how I've been in a rut and just haven't been feeling like doing the things that I know are good for me. And one of the big things there is going and buying groceries and just making meals for myself at home Monday through Friday. If I wanna treat myself to ordering in we're going out and having dinner with friends, that's great, but ordering in should be a treat for me, not an every single day thing. I want to cook myself meals. And it's also a lot cheaper to do that than to get freaking delivery. But I've been in a serious rut these last couple months and I'm not gonna shit on myself for that, but I am going to recognize that this category can be cut. If I'm going out and having dinner and drinks with friends, I'm gonna let myself do that. I want to go out and experience those things, but the problem with that is just that I live in a very expensive place. So like a mixed drink average is like $18. So almost every time I go out, which honestly isn't even a ton, but it costs me. <laughs> I'm writing down cut ordering in. Next, we've got groceries. This is up from Q4, I think maybe because I was miscategorizing them because most of the time my Target charges go under shopping, but I really only go to Target in the city for groceries. So I just recategorized the ones from this past quarter. So that could be why. The rest of these categories all take up less than a quarter combined. So bills and utilities, what can you do? Health and wellness is one that actually went up this quarter because I joined a new gym. I need to make it worth it. That's some one thing that I'll get into when I talk about goals too. I just need to make what I'm paying worth it and really use the heck out of it because then I know that it's benefiting me and that is worth it to me. It's really about deciding what I feel is worth it to me and what I value and making sure that what I'm spending my money on aligns with my values. So that's why the whole dining and drinks thing, I want to make changes there because my values include cooking myself meals, spending money on DoorDash every single day <laughs> because I don't feel like cooking does not align with that value. But that is my spending breakdown. All right, moving on. Okay, we're back in this spot. I kind of like the background, but it's also like the, the lighting is really bad. It is extremely cloudy today. It's been pouring rain all day, which I'm trying to lean into the cozy vibes right now. I've got like my cute little lamps and a candle going. Now I want to revisit my 2024 goals. I put them right in this 2024 planner. So let's go through each goal and see if I've actually done any of these. Goal number one, therapy. Bro, I have problems, okay? I'm gonna be so honest and I'm embarrassed to admit this, but I reached out to a handful of therapists on psychology today at the end of February because that is a goal that I allocated to February. I found some that I might align with. I sent them messages, a couple of them responded to me. And then the thought of following up and having to actually start this, getting into conversations and doing it, just, it overwhelmed me so much that I never followed back up. I am not proud of this. I don't even want to admit this right now because I'm embarrassed. And I know that that's so not cool and it's not that deep. Something about it, I have been so resistant to doing this and the longer I haven't done it, the heavier that resistance has felt. Why is this so hard for me? I don't know, but that's where we're at with that. Next, find an exercise regimen that I actually enjoy. This is a work in progress. I figured it would be a work in progress and that's okay. I did find a gym though in Q1 that I really, really like. I love the vibes. The times that I've gone, it has really not been packed at all, which is so nice. It also offers classes, which I've taken a couple of. I am planning on when I get back to the city, taking some more because they're literally included. And I went to one last week. It was like a Pilates-ish class. Loved the instructor. Actually felt good in the class. So 
I can definitely see myself going to more of those and I was sore afterwards like my abs were sore Which is such a nice feeling honestly like the day after you know you worked hard and your body's like kind of sore I love that feeling. I will say that it did take me like two months once I got back from Thailand to even go back to the gym. And again, as with the therapy thing, the longer I waited, the more it built up in my head and the more resistant I became to doing it. The larger the knowing doing gap gets, the more I make it such a big deal in my head because I'm thinking about it so much, the harder it is for me to actually do it. But I'm adopting a new mindset going forward and it's that it's easier to act your way into a new way of thinking than to think your way into a new way of acting. That's what we're going with. And so I'm excited to get back to it. I will say though, walking around the city recently, I haven't really been wanting to do because people have been getting punched in the fucking face. I'm just like always looking over my shoulder. I feel like I'm in fight or flight <laughs> every time I leave my house. And I love walking around the city. I love just like being outside and getting some fresh air, sun on my face. And I haven't been wanting to do that because people are, have been getting randomly assaulted. And I know that's been going on for way longer than just the last like few weeks to a month, but still it's been brought so much to light in that time that my anxiety is through the roof and I have to leave the house to get to the gym because <laughs> I have to walk to it. Yeah, that's been an issue. Anyway, cook dinners that make me feel good. This is something that I just, again, got back into like last week. I went through a period, and I talked about this in the financial part that I just did. I went through a period where I was ordering DoorDash for dinner almost every night because I wasn't planning my meals ahead of time. I wasn't making myself dinners. I wasn't doing any of that. I wasn't doing any of the prep. Listen, I've been in a rut. Most of these goals in Q1, I haven't done most of these. And honestly, I'm looking at this right now and I'm like, damn, like I'm kind of feeling bad about myself right now. But that's what this check-in is for. It's not to shit on myself. It's not to feel bad about myself. It's just to understand why I've either made progress or haven't and how to adjust to go forward. That's all this is for. All right, next, take a pottery class. Haven't done that either. I don't know if I wanna do like a long class or if I wanna just go to a one, but I talked to a friend about this a few weeks ago and she said she wanted to go to a pottery class. So I'm gonna text her when I get back to the city. And maybe we can go to one together in the next month or so. This next goal, I have been doing the complete opposite of this and it's go to bed earlier, wake up earlier. I've been reading a riveting series and I read it mostly at night. I've been staying up until one, two, sometimes three in the morning. So I've quite literally been doing the opposite of going to bed earlier and waking up earlier. I've been going to bed later and waking up later. And the solution to this would be to just start reading earlier. You know what I mean? Like do my night nighttime stuff earlier, start reading earlier, but somehow the day slips away from me. I think, I don't know if it's my time management. It's definitely my time management. My perception of how long things are gonna take is off. So yeah, number six, morning and night skincare. I think, mm, yeah, no, I have not been doing this either. So that's really good. <laughs> but I will say I made a development with skincare and I realized that some of the products that I was using were not agreeing with my skin. Some of them had comedogenic ingredients, meaning they're pore clogging and I have acne prone skin. But after extensive research, hours of research on the ingredients of all these different products and which ones are actually good and also not pore clogging, I did get a few new products. So I have a new face moisturizer that I specifically want to use at night. And then I have a vitamin C serum I want to use before that because I've got some like dark spots, acne scars and stuff. And then I got a new like soothing sort of moisturizing face serum that is non-comedogenic that I want to use in the morning. I've been doing it the last couple of days. I really like it. It has this like milky consistency almost and it goes really well under makeup. So I thought that would be good for morning. So now I have some new products. So I did my morning skincare this morning. I'm gonna do nighttime skincare later. I'm just excited to do that because now I have products that I really like. My routines lately with skincare have not been good and I haven't been wanting to do them because the products that I was using at night specifically didn't make my face feel clean and refreshed. I can't even explain it. It just felt not refreshing. So I didn't want to do it. I still was washing my face. I wash my face every single night and I do moisturizer and stuff, but I don't know, like the products I was using, they weren't sitting nicely on my face, so it made me less excited to use them. But now I've really been liking, I've only been using these products for the past like three days, but I've really been liking them and how they feel, how they make my skin feel. We've made developments, that's good. Number seven, journal more. My goal with this was once a week. Have I been doing that? No, but I did journal four pages a few days ago and it made me feel so good. I brought my journal home with me. I think I wanna journal later today too. Another thing that I'm on the up and up with, listen, 
after I got back from Thailand, the rest of the Q1 was not my best. So one goal that I have actually done, yay, is to keep reading. I have been reading up a storm. I have been having the time of my life. I am thriving. We'll discuss the books I've read, like I said, in the next part, but I have in fact been reading. And then the last one, I actually sell my clothes when I clean them out. I have a whole bag to take to Buffalo Exchange. I have another whole bag that I'm donating. And then I have another whole bag still in my closet waiting to be listed. This is another thing that the longer I go without just doing it, the more of an obstacle I build it up to be in my head. I either need to seriously like shit or get off the pot when it comes to the clothes that are in the bag in my closet. I either need to just take them to freaking Buffalo Exchange or list them on Depop. If I don't feel like listing them on Depop, take them to damn Buffalo Exchange. At least then I can like get some money for them. Cause at this point, like it's just annoying. Let me just quickly also look at my vision board. Down here, we have some Thailand pictures and live in the moment. This was all Thailand related. I had the most amazing trip ever to Thailand. I truly, truly felt like I was living in the moment. I felt like I didn't care about the superficial things. I felt like I was fully immersing myself in what we were doing, what I was seeing, the culture I was experiencing, what I was eating, the people I was with. I felt so present and I am so, happy about that so happy i had the most amazing time it was beautiful i was i loved it i truly loved it so that was a massive ginormous success also the books here yeah um i've been doing that i have in fact been reading and having the greatest time doing it so let me just let that segue us into my reading recap for q1 i'm gonna pull out my goodreads because i don't have the books with me right now since i'm not at my apartment i do have i think all the books that i read this quarter i have them physical copies so i really would have loved to just like hold them up but i'll like insert <laughs> some like graphic of the whole stack of them right here my 2024 reading goal is 24 books i have read eight so far i read eight books in q1 and i don't know if that seems like a lot or not a lot to you but these books were long, like really long books. So the first book that I finished in 2024 in this quarter was A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J Maas. Fun fact, every book that I finished this quarter was written by Sarah J Maas. So Court of Silver Flames, this is the technically fifth book, I guess, of the Court of Thorns and Roses series, Akatar. It's coming up on here as number four, I think because Frost and Starlight was a novella. So I don't think it counted as like a full book, but this is the fifth book published in the series. This book was absolutely phenomenal. I rated it five stars. Genuinely one of my favorite books ever. I talked about this book in my five books that changed my life video. It was amazing. Like truly fantastic start to my 2024 like year of reading. Second book that I read and finished this quarter was The Assassin's Blade. This is the Throne of Glass novella collection, but it's kind of the prequel. All the stories in this book were from before everything else happened, but it was published like third or fourth in the order, I think. I don't know, but I read it first because I was advised to by my friends who have read the series. And I'm really glad that I did because it gave me a lot of good insight into the main character and just the world and conflicts and stuff like that. I'm now currently on the very last book of the Throne of Glass series. Every character and situation that happened in the novellas have come back and like those characters have been reintroduced and referenced and all of that. So very glad that I read that and very glad that I read it first. I gave this one three and a half stars. It was hard for me to get into. I don't know, starting a new world, especially a new fantasy world is always a bit difficult. It was with me for Akatar and then I absolutely fell in love with it. It was with me here, but spoiler alert, I fell in love with it. So my one takeaway from this book was that the ending crushed me. The ending broke my soul. I couldn't believe it. Every time there's a mention of this specific thing in the rest of the books, my heart hurts. So the third book then was Throne of Glass. This is technically the first book in this series. The rest of these are gonna go in series order. Again, by Sarah Day Mass, they all are. I rated this one 4.25 stars. I loved the competition aspect of this book. I can't really say much because I don't wanna spoil any of these, but I really liked the way that this was kind of set up. Anyway, okay, next, Crown of Midnight. This one I rated 4.25 stars, again, extremely riveting. All of this building of the story and of this character laid the groundwork for how much I love her now. The next book, <laughs> Air of Fire. Five, five stars. Fantastic book, like truly fantastic book. A little description that I wrote, I'm looking at my Instagram stories because I have a highlight of my books for this year and the ratings and kind of like a little blur about my thoughts. I wrote, 
this book because this the ending of this but I wrote this book made me feel almost every emotion possible and I'm currently reeling from the ending and need no one to touch me or speak to me during this time this book dude like oh my god this is the first book in the series that I was really like oh shit Okay, I'm obsessed with this. Like, actually, I was eating this shit up. I couldn't stop. I went right from the end of this book into the beginning of the next one because I couldn't wait. So, fantastic. But the next book, easily, easily the best of the series, at least up to this point, Queen of Shadows. I rated this six out of five stars. That's how much I loved it. Couldn't put it down. Insanely good. Don't even have words for how much I loved this book. That's all. Fantastic amazing the next two books i tandem read my first ever time tandem reading so i read empire of storms and tower of dawn simultaneously alternating chapters really glad that i did that <laughs> for empire of storms i finished that one first and i rated it five stars i wrote great book but i am now filled with unrelenting rage i don't remember why i was filled with unrelenting rage oh 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 yeah yeah okay F that F the ending of this book i was so pissed i had to remember where i was in the storyline the ending of this book and the beginning of kingdom of ash don't even fucking start me and then tower of dawn i rated 4.75 stars empire storms and tower of dawn happened at the same time they were following the same time line but in two different places with two different sets of characters and two different kind of journeys some of the characters know each other but they all are intertwined but it was just focusing on two completely separate perspectives which i thought was really interesting and i'm glad that i read them together so that i could have all of my characters at the same time and seeing how they're like what's going on in one place while at the same time another thing's going on in another place a lot of good developments with relationships and a lot of good developments with alliances and knowledge that people learned that was like oh my god so those are the books that i finished i also have started a couple books but have tabled them for the moment because i have been reading literally only throne of glass i started everything i know about love by dolly alderton i started atlas six which honestly i like got annoyed i'm like maybe a quarter of the way in a third maybe i don't know i got annoyed so i stopped reading and then i started reading throne of glass so then it's been tabled till the end of this. And then I also started 101 Essays That Will Change the Way You Think by Brianna Weiss, which I'm loving. That was a very recent start, but love that book, okay? This is the book I'm reading right now. Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J. Mass. This is the final book in the Throne of Glass series. This is a finished series. So once I'm done with this, it's over. Oh my God. What the hell am I gonna do? Like, what the hell am I gonna do? <laughs> I feel sick. This book is almost a thousand pages here's where i am i'm about 45 percent i'm on page 451 out of almost a thousand so rough estimate but <laughs> oh this series is one of the only things in the past couple months like during my rut that has brought me unrelenting joy complete and total joy except for the times that i was like really pissed off at the books but just reading them has been such an amazing experience and I've been having the best time. I love them. I love my books. It's my favorite thing in the whole world. So here's where we're at now. It's freaking fantastic. And I'm thriving. Hello. Stand on the opposite shore Hello, Ramona I reach through mysterious ceilings My holy hope I look for the things I don't know Show me where the ending goes Honest, honestly don't No! They're fucking dry <laughs> This is what happens when I try to 
practice all Show me where the end Honest, honestly I should be the last to know Hello Ramona I mistook you for a dream The engine glows And I guess you always seem to know Hello Ramona I push back the series scene The ends unknown To get back the life I used to know Show me where the ending goes Honest, honestly don't I should be the last to know We're all in this, I stand alone Show me where the ending goes Honest, honestly don't I should be the last to know Well, that's a wrap on Q1 2024. I'm really excited for what Q2 will bring. Some things to note, it's springtime. I love the spring. It's a very close second for my favorite seasons behind fall. And I wanna have as many picnics in Central Park as I can. Also, I'm turning 25 this quarter, which is crazy, but I'm excited for it. I love my birthday and I can't wait to celebrate with my friends. My little brother is graduating from college as well. So obviously I'm going, very excited to celebrate him. And I may potentially be going on a little trip with some of my best friends. I hope that pans out because I just know that would be so much fun. Thank you for watching my Q1 reset, recap, whatever this even was. I love you so much and I will see you next time.